All right, boys, fellas, dudes, homies, bros, we're gonna do something manly today. We're gonna take apart this engine. So once I get this thing apart, I'm gonna go over what I'm gonna have the engine shop do to her. So let's start stripping this thing down. Oh yeah. All right, gonna get that big bolt off that top cam gear. joint fork see if we can pry this out with it oh yeah it came right out look at that nice nice so apparently even though when you delete the balance shaft you got to leave the balance shaft gear on the camshaft to fill the gap in all right let's get this uh, cam out I'm gonna take those two bolts off, I guess. See how bad it looks, or good it looks, or whatever. Alright, move that light out of the way. I'll just block the camera view a little. Alright. Little handle, I guess. Oh yeah, makes a world of a difference putting that bolt in there. Let's slide this thing in. about the cam but I'm gonna bring it to the engine shop with me have them look over these because I, mean, I don't know what I'm looking at to me it's not looking the greatest condition but it still looks all right I don't see no chipping or anything you know you see where the wear is but yeah I'm gonna have him look at it and inspect it you know if he says I can throw this in it'll be safe and all I gotta do is just put some new bearings in here well, that's what we're gonna roll it turn it around so working on the bottom We're gonna go ahead and put the crank pulley back on. This way we can rotate the crank assembly and take these rods out and pistons. So before we start popping these rods out and pistons, I'm gonna show you my little setup, what I got going on here. So I got this piece of plywood here. I wrote front up, because that's how I'm gonna place them when I take them out. And I got numbers one through six. So we're gonna lay them out on this piece of plywood on this piece of paper. That's the first precaution to not mix them up. Go ahead, get this pickup tube out the way. Pickup screen, whatever you want to call it. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna take this rag here, some rubbing alcohol, and we're going to wipe off the sides and the bottoms of each cap to get all the grease off of them so we can mark them with a Sharpie. So we can number them and also mark an arrow on them facing forward. Second precaution so we don't mix these up. So we got an arrow on the bottom of each cap with a number. This way they're all marked. For each cylinder. And we also put one marker line down the side of each one so when we actually remove the cap and the piston out we know the orientation of which way the cap faces onto the rod. Time to get at number one. And this impact gun ain't working. We have to crack them loose with the socket wrench first. Turning back now. Number 
one. Way there, but it's so bad. You still see the factory grooves in it. That's a good thing. I'm gonna go ahead and match the cap back up with the marker lines and put the bolts back in to hold them together. And now we can lay it down facing upward, knowing that this came out and this was facing to the front of the engine. Y'all can see that. See, that was all scored up in there. So, Good thing I took, wow, yeah, it's pretty deep too. Good thing I took this apart. This was probably on the verge of spinning as well. Alrighty, we got all the pistons out, laid out in order, with the numbers I wrote down. Take a look at this crankshaft here and the journals on it. And yeah, they look uh, all right. Look pretty good. Doesn't look like any of the rod bearings spun on them, so it's a good thing. So let's check out the rod bearings now. Now in my Haynes manual here. Gives you a little kind of uh, description thing on what the wear is and what it was caused by. So I got that to go by. So yeah, when you look in here again, that one you can see right there, the scoring in the center going all the way around. This one, it's got some shiny areas in it. Like it's kind of oiled out. It wasn't uh, contacting the sides at some point. It was just hitting the top areas, it looked like. Let's see this one, this one's kind of the same. That one's the same as well and has a little bit of scoring. And yeah, they're all about the same condition. I'm super happy I took this apart because uh, right before I did take this apart, I was considering on just taking a chance again, giving it a whirl, just slapping it back, slapping it in there, and probably I would have came out with the same outcome, spun bearing in the end or something like that. So now with the pistons themselves, you can see that coating that's on there is pretty much wore off. But you can still see the factory grooves and there's some scoring, you know, right there, going up and down, going across. But they still ain't wore down past the factory groove that's under the coating. So maybe I can just have the surface recoated. I don't know, it's another thing I gotta ask the engine shop about. But yeah, all the wear seems about the same on all the pistons on the sides. So now with my final precaution, so we don't mix these up, I actually went over to Harbor Freight and we picked up this engraver tool. So what I plan on doing is taking this engraver tool and we're just going to, right at the edge here, just engrave a little number right there and another one right here and one on the piston, either right here on the front or right here where the shaft goes. This way, they're all facing frontwards, going to the front of the engine again, so I can't mix them up. That's the plan, man. So we got that done, nothing fancy, nothing perfect, but it's good enough. So we got a little number one there, little number one there, little number one there, and the same thing on the rest of them. There's two, little number two, little number two, so on and so forth through the rest of them. And then here on the rods, it kind of leaves like little burr, so I go over it, just the edge of it with 180 grit sandpaper, literally. Just scuffing the edge right there to just run that burr down so it ain't rough. Right, so this is one thing I did mess up on when I put these numbers on the connecting rods. When I went to the engine shop and showed him what I had here, he said I shouldn't have put the numbers here because on this flat surface here, when it's rotating on the shaft, that it could damage the inside part right there. So that was a no-no. He said you're supposed to mark them on the side, like right here the sides of the rods, not on the surface part of the rod. So don't do that. All right, let's check out the crank. See how the bearings are on this bad girl.
Well, I'm trying to get these main crank caps for the bearings out, and yeah, they're giving me quite a bit of trouble getting them out. So yeah, I jumped online real quick, looked up some form pages, and pretty much to get these out, you just take uh, two big pair of pliers and jiggle it back and forth nicely while you're pulling upwards, and yeah, it popped right out. I got the first two out. I mean, this one I actually just tapped with a, a rubber mallet back and forth and kind of loosened it and pulled it out. Uh, the second one here, yeah, I took the two pairs of pliers, holding each one, jiggling it, and pulling upward as I did it. Got that one out. Now I'm about to do the same to the, uh, the middle and the back one. Just back and forth. Pull upward as you're doing it. And that one came out a whole lot easier than that middle one did. Get this back one out and then we'll check out these bearings. This is the first one, which don't look too bad. A little tiny bit of scoring in it, but still not bad at all. Now the second one back is pretty bad. There's a big old gouge in it going around. I don't know what causes that, unless that's supposed to be there for the oil. I mean, it is right in line with the uh, little oil tab things here for the oil to get through, I guess. I'm not really sure, but let's look at this third one. And I mean, it feels pretty good. It's got the oil groove too, but it ain't gouged in there at all. And they all got the oil groove. And then the back one, yeah, same thing. I mean, they all look pretty good, it's just this middle one here has that big groove in the center, which I'm not sure if it's supposed to, which I don't think so, because I can feel other little grooves next to it. So maybe something got in there and chewed it up a little bit, not really sure. But yeah, and all I gotta do is just lift that crank out, but I'm not gonna do that right now, we're just gonna leave it sitting in there, because uh, yeah, I gotta start cleaning all this stuff up, so I can take it over to the engine shop. Popping these pistons off of the rods, and yeah, I'm just using this little bent pick here and there's a little notch right there. So just going like that, getting this in here and then picking it out. Bam. And then pretty much once I got it picked out, I'm just pulling this around. But you got to keep your other finger in here as you're doing that because this ring I had the first one I did popped out and luckily it flew over there and landed on the workbench so I grabbed it real quick so yeah, you definitely want to keep your finger over it while you're doing that this way when it pops out it'll go flying and then that's it I'm separating them I'm also keeping these pins where they're going in uh, the same way they came out I'm just putting a little line on each one so I know that goes to the front as well don't know how important all this is but I'm doing it anyway just to be on the safe side so last week we ended up pulling apart the uh, the block and we got everything taken out of it getting ready to bring it down to the engine shop so I actually went down last week and talked to the guy at the engine shop to get the game plan together so I knew exactly what we're gonna be doing to it so we went over he's going to measure the cylinders and see if it just needs to be honed or possibly bored over a little bit depending on what the, how the measurements come back. He's going to resize the crank main or check to see if it needs to be resized for the crankshaft. He said he's gonna wash the block down because typically he has to do that anyway before he does the honing and whatnot for it. Um, he's gonna resize the rods and stretch the bolts out because that's all part of it, he said. you know, And I'm also learning all this stuff too because I never had to do any of this before and this is all new to me. So yeah, when he does the resizing of the rods, you have to stretch the bolts out while you're doing it to have that force on there for resizing them. I think that's what he said. And uh, yeah, he's going to send out the crankshaft because he don't actually do the cranks. He does everything there at his shop except for the crank. So he's going to send that out. We're going to see if it has to be grinded and polished up pretty much. And um, yeah, he recommended me to get some new pistons because I showed him my pistons and asked him about recoding them. And he said it would be just as cheap just to get a brand new set of pistons as it was to recoat them. So we're going to get new pistons and new piston rings. And lastly, I have to get the flywheel and the crank pulley pulled off of the car. This way I can give him that as well so we can rebalance the whole crank assembly. So this way I don't have to worry about the engine shaking itself apart. 
And in the end result, I'll have a reliable, freshly rebuilt bottom end that I can enjoy for years to come. And that's what I'm hoping for. I also been thinking while I have the car apart, I'm going to be doing a couple changes to it, but that's it for this one, y'all. Peace and love. Keep it real. And I'll see you on the next one.